the heavy nuclear-powered missile cruiser Admiral Nakimov has gone to sea for factory sea trials after a major modernization. This means that Russia now has the most powerful carrier of Zircon hypersonic missiles, and together with other ships, it fundamentally changes the balance of power. And at the most critical moment for us, we'll talk about this, other achievements of the nuclear industry, and a new hero after a brief summary of positive news. The Soyuz 2.1B launch vehicle launched successfully from Baikonur Cosmodrome. Another batch of Su-34 fighter bombers has been delivered to the troops. In St. Petersburg, the Project 2250 frigate Admiral Amelko was launched, and in Severodvinsk, the Project 20181 Enhanced Ice-Class Armament Transport Academic Makayev was launched. At the Perm-based Enterprise, UECSTAR production of new helicopter engine parts has been launched. Mushroom propeller production for Arctic-class liquefied natural gas tankers has been localized in Chelyabinsk. The Ulyanovsk automobile plant now locally produces frames for Soler's pickups. The largest flax processing plant in the country has been built in the Rostov region. The Russian team won four medals at the International Linguistics Olympiad in China. The nuclear-powered missile cruiser Admiral Nakamov, Project 1144-2EM, has begun factory sea trials in the White Sea after repairs and modernization. The ship launched back in 1988 despite its impressive size and power was soon considered morally obsolete mainly because of outdated electronics and the inability to effectively counter low-flying subsonic anti-ship missiles modernization required enormous resources because essentially only the durable and sturdy hull from the original project would remain and everything else had to be replaced the country didn't have money for such work for a long time, so only in 1999 did the cruiser formally go in for repairs, but in reality, the work only started in 2020. For a long time, there was no information about completion dates. But at the end of 2024, it became known about the successful launch of the ship's nuclear power plant. And this week, Gigant went out for factory trials the last step before Navy handover. That means the huge work on its modernization is finished and soon the Russian fleet will have a new flagship. Its capabilities are now known. A lot of attention during the modernization was given to defense against new types of threats, naval and aerial drones, as well as cruise missiles. In this case, the delay benefited Admiral. On board are at least six Panzer M air defense systems 96 vertical launch cells for anti-aircraft missiles, an AK-100 artillery complex, 30 radars, helicopters, and reportedly its own drones. The anti-submarine armament includes the Packet NK and Otvet systems. But most importantly, there are universal shipborne launch cells that allow the use of Onyx, Kaliber, and hypersonic Zircon missiles. If initially the cruiser could carry only 20 anti-ship missiles, after modernization their number increased to 80. All this turns Admiral Nakamov into the most heavily armed ship in the world. However, even the most powerful and formidable ship cannot change the global balance of power on its own. That's why we've prepared something else. The Zircon hypersonic missile still remains unmatched in its characteristics and gives Russia the ability to deliver an unstoppable strike, including with a nuclear warhead at a range of up to 1,000 kilometers. But few people noticed how, once the missile entered service, it quickly began to fill all niches, even those that previously seemed unsuitable for it. In spring, Nosev Mashi launched the fourth serial Yasin M class submarine. Perm, making it the first regular submarine to carry Zircon missiles. 
all of its sister ships in the project also gained the capability to use Zircon missiles. This means their combined hypothetical salvo could be 192 missiles, each capable of carrying a nuclear warhead. Let's also include Project 949 anti-submarines and Project 2000 250 surface carrier frigates. By the way, the frigate Admiral Amelko from today's news, unlike its predecessors, carries not 16, but already 32 universal launch cells on board. Now it's easy to imagine what kind of threat our naval component alone poses to the enemy in terms of this type of weaponry. But that's not all. Originally a missile designed exclusively for naval deployment, it seems to be evolving and entering new domains on land and in the airspace. There is information about its adaptation for launches from coastal land systems. Recently, it was revealed that the fifth generation Su-57 fighter jet is now a carrier. That's great news. However, there's also another positive so far hidden subtext to this. The thing is, as a rule, when a new type of weapon is widely introduced into the troops, they're not afraid to show it during exercises and according to some reports, even use it in combat. This means that active work is underway on an even more advanced product. It's possible that it's already in the final stage and there is indirect evidence of that. In mid-July, the president of the Russian Academy of Sciences, Gennady Krasnikov, reported to Vladimir Putin about achieving unique results in the development program for hypersonic weapons. The sixth sub-program that was mentioned is fundamental and exploratory scientific research for the defense and security of the country. The conversation was public, so it should be seen as an open signal to the whole world. And judging by subsequent events in global politics, it was heard and understood correctly. That's why we believe that soon there will be a new missile, even more advanced than the Sircon missile, and it would be very appropriate if it is placed in universal launch cells, including the Admiral Nakamov, now back in service. But let's not get ahead of ourselves and continue to follow this topic in future episodes. Next, we'll talk about the anniversary of the industry, thanks to which we can move forward with such confidence today. Eighty years ago, our country laid the foundation for the nuclear industry by establishing the Special Committee on the Use of Atomic Energy on August 20. 1945. We quickly achieved nuclear parity with the United States, making the world more just and stable, and also to give humanity the peaceful atom in all its diversity. From the first nuclear power plant to the first nuclear icebreaker, which forever changed civilization and continues to have a profound impact on the development of technology, today Rosatom operates in more than 60 countries has orders for 33 large capacity power units in 10 countries around the world, and the world's first export order for the construction of an innovative small nuclear power plant. The Rosatom Corporation is a world leader in uranium enrichment and ranks second and third in uranium reserves and production. Only our country possesses a nuclear icebreaker fleet. Today it has eight vessels with three more being built including the next generation icebreaker, Rossia, the world's most powerful. This gives us the right to be the true masters of the Arctic and to develop the unique Northern Sea Route, connecting Europe and Asia by the shortest maritime route. Few realize the atom relates not just to energy and defense, but also health. The method of targeted radiation on disease cells helps fight dangerous diseases and save people's lives. Right now, the first and largest plan in Europe for the production of radiopharmaceuticals for such therapy is being built in the Kaluga region. Over 2.5 million of these medical procedures are performed annually. Maintaining leadership for 80 years is only possible by relying on science and innovation. The scientific division of Rosatom includes 13 research institutes and enterprises. They are engaged in breakthrough projects such as closing the nuclear fuel cycle using fast neutron reactors, thermonuclear fusion, and the creation of new materials and engines for deep space flights. But that's not all. 
Rosatom goes far beyond the nuclear field itself and is successfully developing other non-nuclear areas. For example, it is engaged in the extraction and enrichment of rare earth elements, without which no modern technological production is possible today. Rosatom has been tasked with developing quantum computing, and recently the country has become one of the world leaders with its own computers on different platforms. Two gigafactories are being built to produce lithium-ion batteries, which are necessary for special equipment, public transport, and of course, electric vehicles such as Atom, whose mass production will begin very soon. Nuclear power is rightfully called green, but the corporation has taken an even bigger step toward renewable sources and has mastered the construction of huge wind farms. For them, as well as for Russian aviation and other products, modern composite materials have been developed and are being mass-produced, from raw materials to finished products. Rosatom is implementing additive technologies and has long been producing its own printers for printing complex metal components. And, of course, all of this is integrated with digital systems that help manage factories across the country, train new personnel, design new products, and make life comfortable in nuclear cities. Today, Rosatom unites 450 enterprises and organizations, employing about 420,000 people. It's hard to even imagine what would have happened to our country if 80 years ago we hadn't started this long, difficult, but glorious journey. Festive events took place across Russia to celebrate this important national anniversary. But one of the highlights was the grand show in Nizhny, which was watched by tens of thousands of visitors, including the team from the Vremya Vopird project. We wish Russian nuclear specialists new victories and great achievements. It's Russia's time, a time of achievements, a time to move forward. It's our time. The time we've been waiting for so long. Our time has come. Think, act, shmi. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Subtitles by Priam Oliad.